Hello everybody, this is the Johnny Mare, and welcome to a brand new series. Although it's going to be a kind of a short series, and then it's for the game Gunman Clive, for the Wii U, actually. Um, and this is a game that I actually got on sale on my 3DS a little while ago. I enjoyed it so much that I ended up buying the HD collection for my Wii U, which includes both Gunman Clive and Gunman Clive 2. So I'm going to be playing through the original Gunman Clive, um, and I'm going to be showing off, of course, the main character for this particular game, uh, and that is Gunman Clive. Now there are some other characters in the game as well. There is a uh, female character named Ms. Johnson, um, and then in the Wii U version there's actually a brand new character named Chieftain Bob, and then a special hidden character that is also in the 3DS version as well. And you get that character for finishing the game with either of the main characters. So our Ms. Johnson has been taken away by a nefarious person and we have to save her as whoever the main character is. Now this game is very reminiscent of old Mega Man games and also Contra games. Uh, it's very similar to Mega Man in the sense that you have basic actions of jump, shoot, and run. Um, and then it's similar to Contra in the sense that you can actually get gun upgrades that are very similar to Contra in terms of a quick shot, a um, extra powerful shot, and then a spread shot, as you can see with my character right now. So the game is designed um, kind of for speedrunning. Most of the levels are timed, well, all the levels are timed. So you are encouraged to uh, try to finish the levels as quickly as possible. We're gonna watch out for some wolves here as we continue onward in this stage. Um, and then at the end of each level, there's also a big boss that we have to kill. And as you might expect from kind of the uh, aesthetic of the game as we finish up the first level, uh, it is in the Old West. And so most of the different characters you're gonna see, the enemies you're gonna see, etc., and even the music is done in the style to sort of remind you of the Old West. And, and I like that. I think it does what it does pretty well. Uh, the graphical style is sort of subdued, um, but the fact that they do have kind of these more muted colors, uh, it does make things stand out more, like the enemies. Um, and we're going to be coming up to a section of the game where that really, really shows up uh, when we see some newer types of enemies that appear once we get past these uh, kind of peon enemies that we're fighting right now. Right now. So the game is designed around shooting, but also jumping, so you will have these platforming sequences. Uh, for now, none of them are very difficult. Ow. But some of them do get more difficult as you progress. Jeez. And you'll notice these stupid ducks every once in a while. Uh, you do want to kill most enemies because you will get power-ups for killing them. This can include health, and then of course, the gun power-ups as well. So yeah, new series, huh? Um, that doesn't mean I'm giving up on any of my ongoing series, of course. Uh, I do want to thank everyone who stuck around with my channel through my very sporadic uploads over the last, I don't know, year and a half, two years now at this point, um, as we finish up with stage two here. Um, and here's a new enemy. These uh, pelican enemies will drop um, bombs on you if you give them the chance. So you can either shoot them or just run underneath them and... Uh, avoid them in that way. But yeah, I'm not giving up on any of my series. I will be finishing up with Resident Evil 2 very soon. That is kind of my priority currently. And then uh, once I finish up with that, um, I'm going to be starting back up with Final Fantasy 2 and actually eventually getting back to Nino Kune as well. Um, so I hope to work on those during the summer and hopefully finish Final Fantasy 2 this summer at some point. Uh, we'll see if that works out. Maybe I can finish the main game. I'm not sure I'll be able to also finish the uh, Soul Shrine or the, the Dungeon of Souls, whatever the bonus content is um, that you get once you finish the game. Uh, but I do plan on doing that eventually. Um, so I will be doing that and then also getting back to Nino Kune because uh, one of my good friends, Lady Phoenix, has actually started a LP of Nino Kune as well. And I want to make sure that I can continue to watch that. So I have to stay ahead of her with my series so that nothing gets spoiled. 
So that will be coming back as well, hopefully sometime this summer. Um, and I also do want to sprinkle in a couple of these shorter kind of platforming games. So uh, we're starting with Gunman Clive. I may move on to Gunman Clive 2, although I haven't played it yet. Um, but there's a couple other games I'm also looking forward to playing this summer as well. Um, and summer is a time when I do have a lot more time to actually work on game stuff, so I'm pretty excited about that. One of the, uh, the big reasons I haven't been able to upload videos regularly um, is that basically I haven't really had time because of my life. So yeah, that's, that's why they've been so sporadic, about one per month or so. You'll notice that uh, there are bunnies as well. So in addition to ducks, we do have bunnies also. So here we go, we're moving onward and we're actually gonna be taking on the first boss of the game. So it's a big uh, Elvis impersonator with a uh, chain gun. And he has a couple of different attacks here. So he shoots along the ground when he uh, kneels down there. And uh, he'll also try to butt stomp you. So you just do a medium jump to go over his bullets, and then when he shoots in the air at a diagonal, all you have to do is duck, and you'll actually go underneath his bullets and not take any damage. So yeah, he's not too tough, uh, once you know his pattern. So that was pretty good. So we are done with the, uh, the first four stages or so, or five stages. Um, there are 20 total stages. Uh, each world, so to speak, is in groups of about five stages, with the boss being the fifth stage of each level. And here we have the horses. These are cool. So that very purple kind of color. And all you have to do is really duck, and they'll jump over you. Um, or you can shoot them. That works too. And you do want to be careful on these bridges, because there are spaces. And these barrels here, if you run into them, they will explode and actually take out a part of the bridge. So I find just jumping over them actually works the best for me. I've died many a time when playing this game where I jumped into them or shot them and they took out some of the bridge and down I went into the oblivion. Right, stupid horses, ow. And uh, yeah, we wanna go down here and we're actually at the end of the stage already. And we're gonna progress into a very infamous sequence here, reminiscent for those of you that have played many of the platformers in the past, and that is a minecart sequence. Now you can still shoot while doing the minecart and also jump. So we're gonna have enemies in minecarts. Um, you can shoot, and then some you have to jump over. Um, and then of course, you also have to avoid pits and things like that, so. You wanna make sure that you get basically almost to the end of each little track segment before you jump. Uh, so that you have enough momentum to actually make it to the next area. And we are almost at the end already. There we go. Not too bad. That's another level that I died many times on learning the patterns of. And now we have a sequence very reminiscent of Mega Man, of course, for those of you that have played some of the older Mega Man games, and that is some disappearing platforms that you have to jump across. Of course, the first few are going to be pretty easy to navigate, but then as we progress, they're going to get a little bit more difficult. And some of them are going to require you to actually anticipate when they will appear, so that you can uh, jump where it's not currently, but it'll appear while you're in midair, and you can use it as a platform. So we're not doing too poorly here. Uh, the first couple of levels are actually fairly easy. Um, I would say the first two worlds are pretty easy, so this episode shouldn't take super long. I would anticipate, I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes probably. Um, but the, uh, the last two worlds are a little bit more difficult um, as we run against a fan here, which makes, of course, jumping more difficult. Uh, jumping is the, uh, the best option that allow you to actually progress pretty much unimpeded, so that works out pretty well. Not too bad. But there's a, a few more kind of sequences that the game uses that are uh, one level only sequences. Uh, we saw the minecart sequence, there's actually another sequence, not the same, but similar to that where it's kind of a one-off. You want to fall in the middle-ish of this particular area. If you do hit the spikes on the side, you will die instantly. Unless you're on easy. If you're on easy difficulty, as we're on a train here, 
Makes me think of uh, some of the old uh, turtle beat em up games, uh, Turtles in Time when you were on a train. Um, but if you're on easy, you'll actually just take a little bit of damage. And in pits on normal, you actually have to start the stage over if you die by falling in a pit. But on easy, uh, you'll actually just take a little bit of damage and go back a bit in the level. So definitely, the first time you play the game, kind of getting used to it, it's worth it to play on easy just to uh, get a sense of the levels. But then as you progress, you get better at it. Um, then you can play on normal or hard difficulty. Now these cowboys are actually down and they'll just shoot over without looking, so you actually can't shoot them from the front. So you have to uh, basically jump over them and shoot them from behind. Not too tough as long as you're aware, kind of again, of what their pattern is. And then we have these, uh, you know, very Mega Man-esque gear-like enemies shooting diagonally at us. So you want to be very careful while fighting them. Not doing too bad. And we're almost to the end of this particular level. Now, one of my gripes about this game, as we got a new power up here, the big bullet, and then we lost it. Um, is that you don't really know what the power-ups do for your gun because all the power-ups look very very similar So some of the power-ups aren't as good as others uh, Some of them are definitely better than others like the the spread shot. I like that one the best and uh, You'll have the spread shot and then something will happen and Basically you'll end up switching to a less effective weapon sometimes but here is boss 2 and that is the actual train that we have to take on. And you'll notice its head is, of course, a different color. This is a little bit of a safe spot here. If you duck down with your triple shot, you can duck underneath all of his, uh, his little attacks there. He does have two other attacks that he'll use. He'll shoot a little ball out of his chest, like so. And most often, when you're in this particular position, you'll either blow up the ball before it can actually erupt, or it'll go over your head, and it won't actually hit you. So that tends to work pretty well. Um, he does have a third attack where he'll spit kind of some fire or some acid at you. Um, ow. And the way to dodge that is to actually fall backwards to the left behind these crates. Um, and that will actually protect you. So you want to drop, and that'll allow you to avoid it. But he's almost dead, and that will be it for... Episode 1 of Gunman Clive. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you all next time when we take on the final two worlds of this wonderful game. So long!